Hello and welcome to Livewire's C-Suite reporting season coverage. I'm Ali Selby and today we're sitting down with Andrew Alcock, the CEO of Hub24, for an insider's look at the company's latest result and a sneak peek into what investors can expect over the coming 12 months. Thanks so much for joining us today, Andrew. You're welcome, Ali. Good to be here. Let's talk about the result itself. What are some of the key figures you think investors need to be aware oh, of? I think... Uh, the interesting one in there is that we finished the year at $84.4 billion of funds under admin on the custody platform, uh, but already in six weeks it's up to $87.1 billion. Uh, and so that's some market movement, but that's also uh, good flows and a great start for FY25. So we've had a big year for FY24, but the sentiment is there and the growth is there moving ahead. Uh, the other one, the underlying EBITDA being up 15% and in the platform up 21%. Uh, is a great result. We're really showing that we're increasing the profitability of the business over time. And the div, of course, shareholders like the dividend. It's our highest dividend yet, so at nine and a half cents, fully frank, that's a great result. Yeah, let's stick with that dividend. It was at a 38 cents per share for the financial year and yeah. at a 46% payout ratio. Are there any other plans to redistribute capital to shareholders over FY25? I look, at this stage, we're happy with what we're doing. We've got lots of opportunities to think about, uh, you know, do we buy something? Do we increase the payout ratio? So we'll take that in our stride and think about that. There's been a lot of questions about that. Would you pay out more? It's an interesting position to be in, to be a growth stock, but where you do have the income for the dividend. Mm -hmm. It's almost the best of both worlds. So a lot of shareholders would say, we want you to keep investing and building out your tech for the future. Um, it's possible we do that over time. We did do a buyback to distribute capital, but we finished that when the share price went for a run. So we'll look at that and think about it in the context of possible M&A and other uses. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, I want to talk about superannuation now. The super guarantee is expected or is set to rise a further 50 bips to 12% in 2025. Yeah. What impact does that have on the business? Naturally, Hub is a leader in the super space in retail platforms. We do have the highest annual and quarterly flows into wrap accounts or platform type superannuation products across the industry. Uh, a year ago, we were second overall in, in, in thinking about industry funds. Right now, if you're choosing to switch superannuation from one fund to another and you include the universe of corporate funds, uh, government and funds, uh, retail and industry funds, we're the second highest choice, which yeah. is really showing the power of advice and the power of advisors saying, hey, I'm gonna pick up your super, I'm gonna help you accumulate and plan for your retirement, and we're gonna move it to Hub24. So the increase probably just increases uh, the attractiveness of super, it's a mandated environment, it's incremental though. So we have a lot of people move into the platform when they become pre-retiree stage with good advice, and if they're still working, their contributions will go up. So it's a good, uh, I suppose, resilience point for our business. Our business is resilient. Australians are thinking about retiring for the future. So it underpins growth in the business, particularly leading in that space. But of itself, it's not a huge money spinner. Interesting. Okay. How sensitive is Hub24 to interest rate movements? We feel like we're moving into, or well, the market expects that we're moving into an interest rate cutting cycle. What impact will that have on margins? Look, it does impact the percentage of cash on the platform, uh, does impact our revenue. It's funny, it's counterintuitive though, because when equity markets are running hot, you'll have less cash mm. and you'll have more people going into the markets. Uh, when if equity markets drop or there's a correction and people go to defensive assets, we'll end up with more cash. So the amount of cash on the platform is driven by customer sentiment and market cycles. Interest rates, uh, for us can affect that. From our perspective, the interest rate, unless they get really, really low, it doesn't change the fees we might charge on cash accounts. Uh, that's a set fee. It changes the return for the customer. So we're sensitive interest rates go really, really low, but generally it, it's a good balancing act. I mean, a lot of advisors think about, I'll make, uh, I'll think about the client's portfolio. I'll think about the 95% I invest if they're in retirement. I'll keep 5% there to pay for the grandkids' school fees or for drawdowns. But uh, the, if the rate I'm getting is is okay or great compared to a bank, I'll leave it there. So it doesn't the rate itself doesn't effectively impact Hub as much as it affects the sentiment and how much cash is on the platform. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. What are your internal projections about the total addressable market for Hub Twenty Four, particularly? 
given you already have 76% of the advisor market? Hey, it's really hard to quantify that. We tend to look in this industry about the platform market being one or one point trillion dollars, one point one trillion dollars, but actually the platform market is growing as a result of industry funds and people accumulating. There's so much money off platform that comes into the market. So from a dollar and a funds under admin perspective, it's almost like the personal investments market of Australians, uh, people who have assets inside of super and outside of super. And there's many people who have accounts with brokers and so forth that have portfolios not in a platform. So the addressable market from a dollar sense, if we keep building out functionality, will grow rapidly or will grow beyond that 1.1 trillion that people say is currently on platform. Your question was about advisors though. We've got access to 76% of the market, but only 29% of advisors are using Hub. So whilst we've got contracts with licensees that represent another 47, hence you get to the 76, we're yet to get those advisors using us. I think, why can't we get to 7,500 advisors? Uh, uh, Westpac had relationships with 7,500 advisors. We're at 45 so internally, we think about how do we get to half the market? But by the way, how do we get more than half that market's FUA on the platform? At 7.3% market share, I know it's a long answer. At 7.3% market share though, uh, the banks and the incumbents got up to 15 to 20% market share. So we can more than double just thinking about those maths, not even thinking about the bigger market beyond what's on platform today. We saw a massive drop in advisor numbers from 2019 to 2022. It's kind of plateaued more recently. What's your outlook on advisor numbers? Do you think we'll see a pick up in numbers? I think it's starting to turn. The key thing for me is if we get QAR sorted and tranche two, and uh, we get that sorted for superannuation funds, thinking about the advice they can deliver with uh, advisors who are working in their fund. I think the, the government call it qualified advisors, interesting term. If we can get that sorted. We'll actually have, have start having people come into the industry and learning in that environment, hopefully graduating and then starting to become full holistic advisors. So we've seen it turn. There are green shoots. There are more and more people in advice practices taking their exams. So I think we've hit the bottom, but it's not gonna grow rapidly without some uh, regulatory intervention and change. To me, the key is how can advisors see more customers? If we can deliver that, then we're doing the job for Australians. At the top of the interview, you talked about funds under administration. It rose 35% to $84.4 in FY24, and you said it's already grown even more rapidly over the last six weeks. You have a target of $115 billion to $123 billion for FY26, and you predict the platform will see net flows of more than $11 billion a year, which gets you to around $106 billion. What is baked into that additional oh, great question. nine to 17 billion in funds? There's two things in there. One is market movement. So we have an assumption that we'll get 5% market growth. And so you can add another $5 billion per annum or, or just you know probably eight or nine billion over those two years. The other one is we know that we've got a large transition still to come from equity trustees. So in 24, we moved about $2.6 billion. There's another two and a half billion dollars to come. So you add the two and a half to the 11, to the 11 for each year and you had five for market movement and you get sort of to the middle of that range. So it's sort a of difficult number to hit given what we've got uh, in the can already. However, our goal is always to try and hit the top end of that or overshoot it. We just want to be giving guidance that we have to go back and correct. So it's a sensible range and we, and we know what the breakdown is. Okay. You talked a little bit before when we we're talking about the total addressable market about, you know, all personal finance. Yep. I've actually spoken to a few fund managers recently who talked about this incredible future for Hub24. They really love the company. They say it could be a hub for all things personal finance and it could expand overseas as well. Are those plans on your horizon? Wow. There's some top secret stuff in there. Um, <laughs> uh, not necessarily overseas um, in the short term. I think there's more than enough opportunity in Australia. And Australia has been an exporter of technology around the world until the last few years because regulatory environments have shifted. But certainly with my prosperity being a personal portal where we can store data from people's bank accounts and all sorts of investments, it has the potential to be almost your concierge or your safe or your vault where you might keep information from your bank account, your investments, your super funds. You might keep your will and your estate in there. You might share it with your accountant and your solicitor. So whilst in the short term, we're not trying to be an all things personal finance hub, i.e. mortgages and those sorts of things, the portals and the technology we have will allow that sort of data to be kept there so advisors can deliver advice better 
uh, than they have in the past. So we can provide you with the data to understand your whole portfolio, whole of wealth with a software product called My Prosperity that should link onto the platform. And certainly with our current strategy, it's about growing the platform and growing class and other businesses. But over time, you can imagine if you build out that universe or that view of your entire portfolio at different ages and younger and younger people are wanting to have a self-managed super fund, it could end up being in, in that space, definitely being a hub for all things. Sounds very exciting. Okay, last question for today. You've been at Hub24 for more than 11 years now. It's an amazing tenure. Have you given any thought to succession planning? And if so, how strong is your bench if you ever do decide to leave Hub24? Hey, look, I hope I'm looking younger, I'm working hard at it, but um, <laughs> we love what we do, the energy and the adrenaline in Hub. So uh, look, the bench is great. We continue to grow the talent and the capability in the business. We've got a chief people officer. Uh, we think about that. We're thinking about bringing grads and interns more and more into the business. So definitely there's a strong bench. Uh, definitely there's a, a role for me to play for at least a few years to come yet. And over time, we'll look at those sort of things in terms of succession. Uh, but it's something the board and we talk about all the time. Uh, but I'm delighted with the team we're building and the fact that we're building out capability with a great talented exec team. That means that the business isn't about me and it isn't about others in the business, it's about us as a team. Okay, well thank you so much for your time today, Andrew. It was a pleasure to feature you on Livewire Markets. Thanks for having me, cheers. If you enjoyed that too, don't forget to subscribe to Livewire Markets. We're adding so much great content just like this every single week.